best part about harvesting cleaver. It's pretty easy to hang on to. So here I have cleavers rose, and a bit of calendula. I was hoping to find some plantain when I was in the forest yesterday, but it just wasn't growing anywhere. I can find it everywhere in the city here, but absolutely nowhere up on the island, so uh, we're gonna make do with some rose petals. But today I really want to do an experiment um, making a burn salve with, well, all of these herbs. I am particularly fond of calendula for burn salves and things of the sort, and I really, really wanted plantain for this because that is one of my favorite herbs for this kind of thing, but I am interested to see how cleavers will hold up, and I do think the rose will add a nice gentle touch to it as well. So today I am just going to be starting an oil, and I'm going to, I think, save half of these herbs to use later. I want to try this, do an experiment, doing one with the fresh herbs and one with the dried herbs and see which one turns out better. I know it is against herbalist rules to use fresh herbs most of the time, but when it's for my own personal use, I am okay running the risk of it going rancid potentially. So I am excited for this experiment. these guys have been covered in aphids. I think this one is the worst. Yes, I don't know how well you can see those little guys in there. So I will need to be giving these ones a rinse before setting them to dry. But I was able to carefully pick out all the ones that were uh, looking bug free for this experiment. And now that this is all packed tight, it is time just to add in the oil. So this guy is all set now to infuse. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a full long infusion yet or do a hot infusion that, sh that really only takes about 24 hours to finish. Currently I'm sitting at letting it do a long infusion and then doing a hot infusion after the fact just because I want to get as much potency out of this as I can. But in doing that I am running the risk of it spoiling more. So. I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna sit with it for a second. We are in June now, and while it's not quite hot in Seattle yet, it did get really, really hot last summer. And so if it's getting warm in here, I probably will want to finish this guy out before uh, it spoils because of that. We'll see, I'm gonna look at the forecast. I'm gonna sit with it. Maybe I will only do a um, long infusion just for about a week and then finish it up. So we'll see, I'll keep you posted. This guy is ready to go sit. I'm just gonna put it in my haunted table for a little bit. And then yeah, let's get the rest of these guys drying and the <laughs> aphids out of the calendula. And I almost forgot, uh, I did make this with olive oil. I have been doing some experiments with jojoba oil. Um, I haven't finished making any of them into a salve yet. I do need to do that before I can, 
ultimately it is a whole lot cheaper for me to go to the co-op in Capitol Hill and get uh, bulk olive oil in my own containers than it is to try to find jojoba. And uh, ultimately I think maybe olive oil is more sustainable. Just if you're interested in following suit, I used olive oil. It is one that I absolutely uh, adore using for oils of this sort, but you are welcome to use any that you'd like. And uh, whatever you have on hand really works best. I just enjoy olive oil. I find it works really well. So, put it in this way. feel so mean when I do this. There isn't really a much easier way to get rid of these little guys. I guess that is the way of working with plants at times. I was just working on the lilac perfume and I figured why not take a moment to chat. It felt like the perfect time and I can uh, share with you how it's going and kind of give some updates on life and things and everything after the last video. Continuation of theme felt pretty right. I have been working on this for almost a week now. It has almost been a week since I shared that video with you and uh, it has, it's been incredible. I don't know if I can even thank you enough for all of your kind and supportive and just understanding words. Sharing videos like that often remind me the importance of kind of talking about regular life things because it just shows and opens this door for other people who are going through similar things to feel a little bit less alone and also just to see some different avenues through it. I got so many beautiful tips and tricks from all of you guys and so many incredible kind words and it just made me feel really good about moving forward and excited to get back to creating. I haven't had this kind of energy to create in many many months and it feels really nice. So thank you so much for that. I also took some time the other day after sharing that video just to go back to some of my older videos, things I posted when I first moved here. And I really inspired myself with that. One of the coolest parts of my job is that I document my life and I get to go back and see what I was feeling at certain times. And you know, I remember filming, I remember what I was feeling, even if I didn't say it explicitly in the video. It was just really incredible to look back at the change that has happened in the last almost two years. And it was really nice to see the hope that I had come here with. And ultimately, well, I think I have lost a lot of touch with that hope. I've been a little bit disheartened by the realities of finances in the West Coast is very expensive here. Um, and that was something that I, I wasn't really prepared for. And um, falling in love with a place and ultimately realizing that I don't think I can live here or afford to live here long term has really cut deep. But I came here with so much hope and I wanna find that again. And I think I can. And I had so much love for filmmaking and I miss that. I had to face a lot that I really didn't realize I was going to have to when I first moved here. And then when I moved to the city, it was just such a huge shift to my life. And it's still something that I'm adjusting to. It's it's kind of hard to explain. 
in the city, I am safe to be this one half of myself, whereas in nature, I get to be this other half. And there aren't really places where both of them meet. And ultimately, while they are two halves of a whole of, of me, it's complicated to explore them together. And so when I'm in nature, I feel like one side is suppressed and while I am in the city, the other is. And ultimately, I don't think there's much that is going to change that reality. It's just part of the country I live in and the way that our societies work. But I did a really bad job last year of finding the balance and striking the balance that I needed to. And I'm falling into a similar rhythm now. Ultimately, I just need to spend more dedicated time in nature and in all of my favorite places here. I am in love with the mountains and I haven't been in quite a few months. Thinking back to the last time I was there, I, I think it was December. And so that's something I really need to get out and do. And I will certainly be taking you along with me while I try to strike this balance between the two worlds. I don't know, I'm kind of excited. I feel really good about it. And having realized that that is just this big area of lacking has helped me kind of open this door that I feel like will be a really good avenue through which to work on healing, which is really what I need to focus on. So this week I do have some more work to do. I think I'm actually going to film a um, apartment tour for you all to put up here next week. Uh, it's not much. I'll probably mainly just show the main space here, the uh, living room, dining room, kitchen, maybe some shots of the bathroom and maybe the bedroom, but um, we're finally getting pretty well settled in these spaces and it's a pretty cool place. So I think it would be fun to share and I know everybody uh, keeps asking for one. So I think I'll do that next week. And then uh, I have a couple more videos to catch up on and book stuff and other channel videos that I have to catch up on. And then uh, I'm gonna focus on really healing and getting out into the mountains. So I'm hoping either at the end of this coming week or next week to be out there doing that. But anyways, thank you again for all of your kindness. It really means the world to me and I don't even think I can put to words how much it has just helped re-inspire me. I, it means a lot to know that what I share can connect to a lot of people and I forget that a lot. And so um, it was a very nice reminder. And it was a perfect time to try this new experiment with perfume, which I've never tried. And it's actually turning out really interesting. It's very subtle still, and I think I'm going to keep uh, putting lilacs on it for another week. I was thinking that it would maybe be okay after one week. I'm going to just keep going until I run out of lilacs. But uh, it's very interesting. It's very subtle, but it's definitely there. I've just been kind of working on filling up this plate every morning just to start the day. And it's a really meditative, beautiful practice. That's a lot of what I've been trying to do this past week. And I haven't filmed a lot of it just because I've really needed to work on <laughs> rebalancing these things, but spending time to go slowly. And that's been, doing a lot. I just, I feel a lot more like a human all of a sudden and um, just inspired. I also spent a bit of time just kind of decluttering this space and uh, looking in cabinets and I actually ended up finding my home blessing that I had done when I moved into this apartment. I had worked it for about a week and once the candle had fully burned down, I didn't really want to get rid of the herbs. Usually with that kind of working, I will compost it or you know, bury it back into the earth, just allow the energy to disperse uh, naturally that way. But it just didn't feel right to do that with this one quite yet. And so I kept the herbs, allowed them to dry. And now that they're fully dry, I've been thinking about maybe grinding them down a bit and adding them into a little spell bag to hang either on the door or just somewhere in the apartment to keep while we live here. And so once I'm done with this, I think I'm gonna go grind that up and uh, take you along with me on that process.
So here is all that remains from that home blessing I did. It is just a bundle of dried herbs now, but it just, it felt right to keep it. So I think I'm gonna grind it up and then add it either maybe to a jar or a bag. I'm not sure yet. Let's see how it looks. I don't think I'll make it quite into a powder, but uh, just a little bit smaller than it is now. ultimately decided that a bag would do it serve this purpose best it smells incredible and I felt that jarring that up uh, would kind of lessen it so this feels really good and really perfect I don't know where I'm going to hang it up yet I was thinking maybe on the front door um, but I think I'm gonna hang it in the entrance somewhere but uh, I guess you'll just have to watch the apartment tour to find out next week. But anyways, this week has been very much what I've needed. Crafting random herbal things that I just feel like making because I want to and taking things kind of slow. Next week, like I said, I'm gonna share that home tour and then I have a couple of things to catch up on and after that I am going to be getting back into nature and falling in love with filmmaking again because I really miss that and I know that it's still here. I'm very much looking forward to all that is to come and thanks for coming along with me on this journey. I hope you're doing well and I will see you very soon.